This is a demonstration on how to guide to configure AMD FX CPUs. As you can see, we're going to use an 8120 model. To increase performance on single core or multi core or single thread applications on an AMD FX chip, we will want to, believe it or not, disable half the cores. So the first thing we will do is go to Advanced BIOS Features. Your BIOS may be different, but uh, you may have something that looks like this. Advanced BIOS Features. Go CPU Core uh, core Control. Go Manual. On the one bottom, go 1 Core per Computing Unit. Go Enable. This will take your 8 core down to a 4 core. Doing so means that each core doesn't have to wait on another core, and each core Per module has full access to that module without having to share it. So this will increase um, speed for single thread applications or single core applications as well as multi-core applications so that they get pushed on one core per module without having to share any space. Once you do that go up to M MB Intelligent Tweaker here is where you can permanently set your CPU frequency as well as overclocking. The reason why we're going in here is because there's something called Core Performance Boost. And I'm going to show you how to uh, permanently enable this. So instead of instead of having it fluctuate as needed, and in some cases programs act poor, poorly when the core the core frequency is constantly changing on the uh, fly, it is better to manually set it to make sure that your per core performance boost is always enabled. So for this one, we will disable. As you notice underneath it, it says 4000 megahertz, which was the auto, because we're at half boost, which means four cores instead of full boost, which is eight cores. On half boost, you can get up to 4 gigahertz, which is what AMD has specified. So what you go is you go up to CPU clock ratio, change it from whatever the default was to 20. If this was full boost with all 8 cores enabled, you would change it to 17, which would bring it down to 3.4, because 3.4 is the maximum core boost that AMD specifies for all eight cores or four gigahertz for only four cores enabled. So once you have that, back out, go save and exit, but I won't do it because I already had it pre-configured. And once again, your uh, your own personal system may vary, but I've found out for games like Project Cars and a few others that I normally play, having AMD FX to set to one core per module is a lot better than having two cores per module enabled because nothing has to be shared and nothing has to wait on another calculation to be finished first. And yes, this is actually on a solid state, and yes, that's kind of slow. Which is ironic, because it's actually on a brand new 250 gig solid state. But, I'm not going to worry about it. Every time I do a demonstration, things seem to be a bit slower. Um, don't worry about this air. Ever since I've got some updated NVIDIA drivers, for some odd reason, it's telling me that my SLI isn't configured properly, even though I don't have SLI in here. Just if you ever have this air, for some reason, just hit shut down later. So is my system still coming up online? It's not. It's not done yet. Anyways, I won't wait for it, but I know for a fact it hasn't fully come up online yet. We go into the task manager, I'll bring this down, as you can see, right here. It 
So it's reading 3.99, 4.05 is the highest, one core per computing unit. Disk C and disk G are both just going nuts right now. This is still trying to come online. Ah, oh, there you go. Now my system's fully up. When that program comes online and my video cards fans speed up to 100%, that's how I know the system's fully up. I'd like to know why these are going nuts right now, but we won't worry about that. So, that's my solid state device. Um, that's how you can treat your AMDs, and they will actually perform better for games and, and like I said, single core operations, or even multi core if the program's designed to throw actually use multiple cores, it'll spam it across the multiple cores and these ones aren't sharing with another core. It's the same theory with uh, Intel hyperthreading. Um, if you disable Intel hyperthreading, you don't get those virtual cores per real core, so threads don't collide and cores, real cores don't have to wait on virtual virtual core calculations to finish. So uh, unless you're a very huge multi-thread user or application that such as video editing or or rendering I would highly probably disable hyper threading as well as disable AMD's uh, second core per module well I hope that helps somebody out there